deliverance. So the focus tonight is we are here to let out our songs of deliverance. But before we continue, we just need to, to, to have a message. And now the, the, the message of tonight is coming in a different dimension in the sense that while the message is going on, it will be intertwined with worship. You know, we are letting out our songs of deliverance. And that is why I'm encouraging every one of us to be in the attitude. You know, be, I know you're here for a reason. So please be focused. Receive that which you, are, you want from the Lord because he's here. Is here already. Can you just raise your hands wherever you are and just worship him? Thank you, sir, for that awesome time of worship. Is he going to worship the more? Oh, yes, we want to worship with this song. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. Oh, Bako, see, handelebo, she, kalegelebo, oh, we cut a yabala. Yes, Lord. Worship you all of the days. Of my life. I'm here worshiping all of the days of my life. Is that your confession to God tonight? Tell him, Lord, I'll be here worshiping you all of the days of my life. All of the days of my life. Help me, help me worship me. All of the days of my life, I'll be worshiping. All of the days of my life. Let me give us a little contest. Like I said, we are going to a time of message and worship together. So we'll be worshiping God, stopping the message, just worshiping. That is the whole focus of tonight. That's why it's still the songs of deliverance. So I want us to be in the attitude, to be here to receive from the Lord. Now the first song we've sang says, I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. Is that your confession? That no matter what, when God is seeking true worshipers, He will always find you there. When He's seeking true worshipers, that will worship Him in spirit and in truth, He will find me there. If that is your confession, my sisters, raise your hands to him and say, Father, all the days of my life, I'll be here worshiping. Can we sing it again? I'll be worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be Oh, 
worshiping you all of the days of my life no matter what I face no matter what comes my way you will understand this more through the message we want to learn tonight no matter what I face no matter what comes my way daddy I say I'll be here worshiping you I will be the true worshiper that seeks to worship you in spirit and in truth why don't you open your mind and say father as we go to a time of word and worship, Lord, speak to me. Lord, reach out to me. I'm here for you. I'm not yet a sick man. Lord, minister to me. If there's anything you're expecting from the Lord, why don't you ask him right now and say, Father, minister to me. Minister to me concerning this situation because he's here already. Father, we worship you. I pray for myself, oh God. I release my lips to you, O oh God, that you will speak through me. You will minister to us. Your name will be exalted. No man will take the glory. The Lord will be glorified and the people will be blessed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? If you are in the Zoom room, write it out in the comment section. Shout hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. So the theme of today's program, Beauty Makers Academy, the family meeting, is the songs of deliverance. Those who are new into Beauty Makers, I want to seize this opportunity to welcome you. For my sisters in BMA, you are also welcomed in the name of the Lord. If this is your first time of joining us in Beauty Makers Academy, you are welcome. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. We can see all over you. Though many of you are under the camera. The glory of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for joining us tonight. I see many of you when they were coming in. God bless you. I appreciate you all. God bless you. God honor you. You have honored God in my life by coming. And God bless you in Jesus' name. You will live to testify concerning today's program to God's glory in Jesus' name. So the theme of today is Songs of Deliverance. For those who have been following our program in Beauty Makers Academy since September, you realize that um, one of, there's a particular person in the Bible that we talk so much about, and that is Moses. Now, that's not going to be our case study today, but I just want to start from that angle, then we'll move on. Okay, now, one thing is that in Exodus chapter 15, I hope you can hear me very well. Exodus chapter 15 from verses 1 to 21. If you read it, I'm not going to be reading that, but if you read it, you'll find there that the children of Israel were singing praises to God. What happened? After God you know, delivered them from Pharaoh, eh? or God Pharaoh, after God delivered them from Pharaoh, the hostess and the chariots that refused that they don't want, he doesn't want them to go to the promised land. You know, the Lord wasted Pharaoh and his chariots in one day, right in the presence of the children of Israel. So the Bible says that the Israelites came up and began to sing praises to the Lord. And specifically in verse 21, the Bible says, Miriam sang to them. Sing to the Lord. He was telling, she was telling the Israelites, sing to the Lord, for he's highly exalted. Both us and driver, he has thrown. He has hauled into the sea. You know, to sing to the Lord. So that's an example of a song of deliverance. For in this case, this song of deliverance was sung after a victory. But in the place of prayer, the focus and the direction I got for tonight's meeting is different. In the sense that the question I got for tonight's meeting is this. Can I still sing my songs of deliverance even before deliverance? Are you catching it? The, song, the Israelites here, they sang their songs of deliverance after the deliverance. But now the question for tonight's meeting for you and I is, can you still sing your songs of deliverance even before the deliverance. So that's going to be the case study.
that we're going to be looking at tonight. Now, before we look at the case study, it's important for us to understand the meaning of songs of deliverance. Songs of deliverance. If you open your Bibles to Psalms chapter 32, verse 7. Psalms 32, 7. If you have your Bible, please open it. Psalms 32, 7. The NIV translation says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Let me read it again. Psalms 32, 7. It says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. From here, you can see songs of deliverance is a shield. It's a shield. It's a protective covering. It's a cover. It protects from trouble, harm, and danger. Because look at what David was saying there when he was speaking about the Lord. He said, you surround me with songs of deliverance. That means songs of deliverance is a protective covering. So if we look at that phrase, songs of deliverance, when we say song, what do we mean? Music. So now, if I put it together, songs of deliverance, what I'm simply saying, it's a music that can bring about a deliverance, right? It's a music that can bring about a rescue. It's a music that can bring about a release. Are we getting the understanding now? It's a music that can bring about a freedom. It's a music that can bring about a liberation. So that's the meaning of it. Songs of deliverance. It's a song, it's a music that you and I can sing that can bring about our rescue. It can bring about our deliverance. It can bring about our liberation, our release, our freedom. So how many of us here tonight are ready to sing those songs that will bring about your release, your freedom, your liberation? If you are ready, wherever you are in your house, I want you to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's important for us to understand why we're doing what we're doing. So these are songs that we can sing that can protect us, that can cover us, you know, from harm and trouble. So we can see here that songs of deliverance, it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool. Perhaps you don't know this before. I'm opening your eyes to it. It's in Psalm 32 verse 7. It's a powerful tool that God has given to us to use in the time of trouble. So now the question is, now that you know that it's a powerful tool, will you use it? You know, you, are, you and I have three options when we are faced with situations that scares us. We have three options when we are faced with trouble. Number one option is either to use that song of deliverance or two, to remain quiet, to be silent in the trouble or the third one, to be groaning in the trouble, to be complaining in the trouble. Now, there are three options before us. The question is, which one will you choose, my sister? I'm going to choose song of deliverance. Now, if you choose to be, to be silent, if you choose to groan, let's see what the Bible says about that. In Psalm 32, verse 3, it says, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Can you see that? When I kept silent, that means if you choose to be silent, your bones will be wasting away. If you choose to be groaning, your bones will be wasting away. And when somebody's bones is wasting away, what happens? You become sick, you become tired, you become dejected, you become frustrated. But if you choose to use that tool, which is the song of deliverance, what happens? You will get your deliverance. I will show you that from the Bible so that you know that that is what will happen. So there's a case study. Someone in the Bible, two people in the Bible that we are going to read about them. Okay? That used this song of deliverance. They used this mighty tool. And it worked wonders. So if you have your Bibles, please open to Acts chapter 16. Verse 16 to 40. I would quickly read. It's important for us to understand the story. Acts chapter 16. Please, I want you to follow me, my dear sisters. We are here to, to let out our song of deliverance. But we need to understand the biblical concept behind it. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 
I read. He said once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She paid a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Verse 19. When our owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrate and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. Verse 22. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be striped and beaten with words. After they have severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. <laughs> Suddenly, hey, Mashitele Makuri Abasata. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. Verse 33, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jail with the order, release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. Now, do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates. And when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is an example of two men. That used that tool, the tool of the song of what of deliverance. Just a recap. I don't want to go into too much details, but what happened was that in the discharge of God's work, they saw a girl, you know, that was demon possessed, and they prayed for the girl, and that got the master of the girl to be annoyed. That can you pray for this girl? You have made us lose our source of income. And in anger, they threw Paul and Silas into the prison. The Bible said they told the jailer. Guide this one very well. Oh, make sure you watch over them. And then the, the, the jailer decided to pull them into the inner, inner, inner carcass, into the inner cell. But the Bible makes you and I know <laughs> that in the midnight, Paul and Silas chose the first option. Remember, we have three options. Number one, silence. Number two, groaning. Number three, use the songs of what? Deliverance. 
So that night, Paul and Silas chose the option of using what? The songs of deliverance. And what we read together, we can see that certain things happened. So I want to quickly look at those things that happened. Number one thing I got from there was that you realize the Bible says that when they were singing, hmm, the prisoners were listening. Did you hear that? When Paul and Silas were singing to praise their God, the prisoners were listening. So that means that the song of deliverance has an anointing that cannot be ignored. Are you hearing me? Songs of deliverance have an anointing embedded in it that cannot be ignored. Now, there's a word for someone here. You may be the only one singing in your house right now. Maybe there's a particular problem going on in your house. And uh, people are wondering, why should you be singing in this situation? Can you not see the protective situation you are in? And you are singing and they are looking at you. What are you saying? I want you to know that continue your word, you are singing. Because something is happening. They are listening. Something is happening. Don't shut your mouth. Because the song of deliverance has a potency that cannot make anyone ignore it. So keep on singing. Keep on singing. They may be looking at you because I could imagine the other prisoners looking at him and saying, what is wrong with this other prisoner? In this situation, you are singing. But the Bible said they were listening. Continue your singing, my dear sisters. So because there's an anointing embedded in the song of deliverance that makes no man, no man can ignore it. They may choose not to sing, but something is happening. They were listening. And of course, at the end of the day, look at what happened. By God's mercy, by God's divine arrangement, those that were just listening, they enjoyed part of the freedom now. By the time God freed Paul and Silas, he freed the other prisoners. So you see, continue your singing. Even looking at it, the Bible says the prisoners were what? Listening. And at the end of the day, they enjoyed part of the freedom. There was something I also got from there, my dear sisters. Do you know that where we are matters a lot? Who we move with matters a lot. Things rub on on us. The freedom that Paul and Silas were supposed to enjoy alone rubbed on the other prisoners. Just because Paul and Silas did the right thing. It is important for us to consider the people we move with or where we find ourselves. You want grace, you move with the person of grace. It robs, it robs. If not, look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 20. He said, walk with the wise and what will happen? You will become wise. He said, for the companion of fools suffers harm. So you can see that things rub on. I remember there was a story, my father the Lord, that the trio, Pastor Ian Nebo of Redeemed Christian Church of God, he said about a testimony one time during his sermon. He said he went to pray for someone in the hospital that was already told that the person was going to die. And in the room, there were other people that had already been told by the doctors that they were going to die. But he said he only went there to pray for his own child, as in the, 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 the spiritual child. And he got there, he prayed for the person. But by the time the Lord did the work, it was not only the person that was healed. Every other person in the room was healed. The doctors were surprised. So you can see that it is important. I just needed to say that. So you can know here yeah, that the prisoners were listening. So there's something about the song of deliverance. It has a potency. It has a, a power that makes it something that cannot be ignored. Another thing we need to know about the songs of deliverance is that it has the anointing, just like I mentioned, that transmits freedom. Can you see what happened? The freedom was only meant for Paul and Silas. After all, they were the only ones singing. But the others enjoyed it. I'm taking time to explain this. So that by the time you sing your home tonight, and you sing it even after tonight in your home, you understand the really meaning of what you are doing. So you can see that the song of deliverance has anointing that transmits freedom. It transmits rescue. It transmits what? Wonders. So you can see, it flows. You may be the only one singing, but somebody else will be experiencing the freedom. As we are in the Zoom room, somebody else may be experiencing the freedom you are singing for. So it has the anointing to radiate freedom. After all, Paul and Silas did not have physical contact with all the prisoners, but see what God did. So that is why we are confident tonight that God is going to do wonders. 
That's where the Zoom room, worshiping from our own house. It will radiate out to everyone in the Zoom room. It will go to the YouTube. So we are not standing on our own confidence, but the confidence on the word of God because we have seen that it has happened before and it can happen again. Hebrews 13 8 tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can repeat the same thing. So if you believe with me, my sister, I want you to shout hallelujah. If you believe with me, I want to shout hallelujah. So you can see what the songs of deliverance can do. The second thing, when they were singing, what happened? There was a great earthquake. The Bible says the foundations of the prison were shaken. It was shaken. Tonight, every wrong foundation, wicked foundation, evil foundation shall be shaken in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 15 verse 13, it said every plant that my heavenly father has no planted shall what? Be uprooted. So I want you to believe in that word as I have believed in it for myself. That every plant that God has not planted shall be uprooted. So tonight there will be a shaking, shaking, shaking of evil foundations. There will be a shaking of prison of the mind. There will be a shaking of prisons that have been holding you back from not moving forward. There will be a shaking, a shaking of prison of sin. There will be a shaking tonight. Evil foundations will be destroyed tonight in the name of Jesus. That's what song of deliverance can also do. It has the anointing to shake evil foundation. It has the anointing to shake ancient, wicked, evil causes, evil covenant. So you can see that God has given us a great tool. A great tool. Shaking. When we say shaking, trembling. Trembling. Trembling of wicked powers. Trembling of wicked powers. Trembling of wicked powers. The Bible says in Psalms 99 verse 1. He said, let the Lord reign. Let the earth tremble. So we are saying, the Lord reigns. And wicked powers, what? They tremble. That's why we can sing the song. Demons tremble at your presence. Demons tremble at your presence. We want you to start worshiping. We're already singing our songs of deliverance. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything we do is great. Demons, demons travel at your presence. Worship him, worship him. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, glory. Everything we think about you is great. You know, when I was doing this Bible study, I was saying, Paul, it would be so nice to have an understanding. Maybe the clips of what Paul and Silas were probably singing that night. It would be so good. Now, we may not know the specific song they were singing, but I want to encourage you, as we are stopping at every point in worship, please sing with us. We are already letting out our own songs of deliverance. So let out your own in your house. I'm already making you see what happens when you let it out. So we are just in that state. We imagine what Paul and Silas were going through. We are playing it in our mind. When they were seated with those chains in their hands. Oh, they chose not to see the chains in their hands and their legs. They kept saying, demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Do you believe that? I want you to sing it again. Demons tremble at your presence. Almighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. We say, how great is our God. 
sing with me, I'll pray. This our God, oh, we'll sing, I'll pray. I'll pray, this our God. Imagine them seated there and looking around and saying, how great is our God. We choose not to look at this. My sisters, take your eyes away from anything. See the greatness of God. Imagine the greatness of your father. Imagine him rising on your behalf concerning that situation, concerning that matter. Why don't you just let out your song of deliverance? Let it out, let it out, let it out. We are here tonight to let out our songs of deliverance. Come and let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. Oh, me, I go so near the Akatalegere. Father, we say how great, how great, how great you are. How great, 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 oh God. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, we see how great, how great. So you see what happened? There was a shaking. There was a trembling. What was the tough thing that happened when they were singing the songs of deliverance? The tough thing the Bible says said was they were immediate opening of doors. Immediate. He didn't say tomorrow. Immediate. That means as we're in the zoom of life. We believe in God. It can be immediate opening of doors while you are in the zoom room. It can happen immediately. Because that was what happened. And why did you think those doors were open? You know, when they were worshipping God, yeah. I can imagine the king of kings smelling that, that aroma of worship and he stepped into that situation. He stepped into the prison himself. And so, every on that doors had no choice but to be open. You know why? Because God himself, Jesus himself is the door. The Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 9, I am the door. I am the door. Those who come in through me will be saved. So Jesus himself is the door. So when the door, door of all doors, came in, every other doors had no choice but to be opened. So that was what happened. So as we worship God tonight, the mighty door himself was stepping through that situation. The mighty door were coming. And every other doors, every other doors had no choice but to be opened. In the name of Jesus. Like I was saying, I kept imagining what could they be singing that night? What could they be singing? This song came to me. Praise God. Hey. Praise God. Praise God. Just keep singing. Praise God. Just keep praising Him. Praise God. 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 Because of you, I will praise you, 
probably, probably they were wondering that why are we in this situation? No, probably they were just wondering. But probably, probably in their hearts, they were just saying, Oh God, despite all we are going through, just take the glory out of this. And perhaps they were singing the song. Perhaps. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. You deserve it all. Would you write that kind of a song? You know, sometimes God allows us to go through some things because He wants to take the glory. And you see at the end of the day that God took the glory. From what happened to Paul and Silas, salvation came to another family. So my dear sisters, in that situation, if you don't you just let off your song of deliverance, pointing it back to him and saying, Father, take glory, Father, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy God. You deserve it all. And indeed, the Father took the glory. He stands in, he brought freedom to Paul and Silas, not only that, he took the glory, he brought freedom to every other prisoners, not only that, he took the glory and brought salvation to the family of the jailers. What other glory can now be covered? Glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. You deserve it You know, Father, Father in heaven desires that people become saved. The Bible says that in heaven there's always rejoicing. So he, he, he truly took the glory. He took the glory. He took the glory. So what you're going through, my sister, just let out your songs of deliverance. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love God. And are called according to his purpose. He's going to take glory in that situation. I could imagine Paul and Silas again. And they were sitting there. And they said, Father, love me. Because they were there. They were there. Come on. We love you. We are here, we are here for the Father. We are here for you. Take the glory out of our situation. We are here for you. I said songs of deliverance. It carries an anointing that cannot be ignored. So if you are the only one even singing in your family right now, come on, sisters, keep singing it. Your family are listening. It's doing something in their life. You may not see it, but it's working wonders behind the scenes. I said songs of deliverance carries an anointing that can transmit freedom. See what happens? Paul and Silas were supposed to be the only one to be free, but there was a transmission of freedom. I said songs of deliverance brings about an immediate shaking. There was a shaking of the foundations of the prison. And in our lives there will be a shaking tonight. That is what songs of deliverance does. I said songs of deliverance can bring about immediate opening of doors. Doors of opportunities. Doors of lifting. Doors of blessings. Mika 
now runs to tell again. I said, sons of deliverance can bring about immediate losing of chains. Every form of chains are loosed in the name of Jesus. I said, sons of deliverance can result to salvation. See what happened in the life of the chain. There was salvation. I want you to open your mouth and just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Oh, my God. 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 O
Too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You bring yourself in my life, and I'm here to realize you're too faithful to fail me. You're faithful, God. That is why That is why He's forever 
you've never at any point in time given your life to God. Remember one of the things I said that the song of deliverance does is that it brings about salvation. I don't want you to miss out on greater things that the Lord wants to do in your life and even greater things that he's going to do tonight. So please, if you're listening to me wherever you may be, if you know that you've never given your life to any point in time, I want to encourage you. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Look at the story we have learned about Paul and Silas. He is able to do much more than that in your own life. Turn your situation around and give you reasons to smile and to rejoice. So if you are listening to me and you want to give your life to God, can you just join me and pray this prayer? They say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm sorry for my sins. Lord, forgive me in the mighty name of Jesus. Use the blood of Jesus that was shed out on the cross of Calvary to wash me clean of every sins and blemishes in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I confess you as my pastor, Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and I follow after you. In Jesus' name have I prayed. Amen. So I want to encourage you, if you pray to that prayer, wherever you may be, please look for a Bible believing church around you where the word of God is being spoken. Please become a part of the church so that you can grow in faith with other believers. As you do so, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll be rounding up shortly, but before we do, we want to, I just want to once again thank everyone for joining. We're going to be dancing. That's, we're going to be letting out our songs of deliverance by moving our bodies now. Okay, it's all part of it. All right, but before we go into that session, I want to thank everyone again for coming tonight. It's great. It's an honor. God appreciates you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Um, this is Beauty Makers Academy. Perhaps you're wondering. It's a